a huge topic as such, but uh, I'm trying to make it more uh, concise and more understandable so that we can, uh, you know, explain the things well to all the participants. And uh, it would be great if, uh, you know, there's a, uh, you know, participation from the uh, our colleagues and all the, you know, doctors in this uh, presentation. Uh, so hematuria as such is basically, uh, uh, you know, treatable condition and uh, it is very important to diagnose hematuria before, uh, you know, we start treating. So the diagnosis is more important. What are the causes and then how to treat? That is a different aspect altogether. So I will be just uh, today, I will try to go on with the, uh, you know, the causes of hematuria and how to, how to basically diagnose if a child comes to him, uh, comes with you with hematuria. So that's how we go with it right now. Absolutely, doctor. So before we start, I would request all my attendees to pay close attention for today's session. And if you have any doubts or you want to ask anything particular with Dr. Vineet, please write it on the chat box. We'll be taking the question at the end of the session. Thank you so much. The screen is all yours. So uh, let's first see. Uh... So let's go with the contents. What I'm going to first discuss, first will be the introduction. Uh, what is hematuria and uh, what is macroscopic hematuria? What is microscopic hematuria? Then I'll go with the pathophysiology, which I will be not describing in detail. Then we'll go with the causes. Then we go with the diagnostic criteria, which involves the history, uh, which we have to take, which is very important. The examination, the set of investigations, which we have to do. Uh, to rule out various disease factors causing hematuria and finally the management which is which i'll not be discussing in detail because that's basically for the nephro guys to do it otherwise they will just come on my heads and they will start uh, breaking my heads okay now let's see introduction hematuria hematuria what does hematuria mean you know blood in the urine right so like i discussed earlier also it may be a gross hematuria or a microscopic hematuria gross is also called as a macroscopic hematuria, which you can see uh, uh, by a naked eye, right? And microscopic hematuria, as the uh, name suggests, is basically when you send a urine routine examination only on the microscopes and we see red blood cells, then we call it a microscopic hematuria. But macroscopic or grass hematuria is when the parent comes to you and say ki, uh, the, the child had passed urine, it is more of red in color. Uh, rather than the normal urine what he passes. So that's basically, which can be seen by a naked eye, that's gross or macroscopic one. Now, gross hematuria, like I discussed, is seen by the naked eye, so microscopic hematuria needs a microscope. Uh, hematuria is defined uh, as the presence of at least five red blood cells per HPF of this centrifuge urine or five RBCs per microliter in a non front centrifuge urine. So remember these five red blood cells in a HPF, in a HPF of a centrifuge urine or five RBCs per microliter in an uncentrifuge uh, urine. So let's talk to the pathophysiology. Now, why hematuria occurs? Now, you have to understand any destruction or any inflammation or any, uh, uh, you know, uh, cause which is causing uh, the structural destruction of the whole uh, ureter or the bladder uh, or the kidneys can lead to hematuria. So, like I told you, structural disruption in the integrity of the glomerular bracement membrane caused by the inflammatory or the immunological process. That leads to hematuria. Toxic disruptions of the renal tubules. That leads to hematuria. And mechanical erosion of mucosal surface of the genital urethral tract. That will come to the point why I said mechanical erosion. Okay. Next, uh, let's come to the causes of hematuria. Now, if I say uh, uh, glomerul, uh, glomerular hematuria, like we discussed in the earlier slide, uh, if there is a disruption of the integrity of the glomerular basement membrane, right? When the glomerular membrane is involved, then we call it as a glomerular hematuria. Now, it can basically involve, uh, as I told you, only the renal system, or it may be, uh, you know, a cofactor uh, for a multisystemic disease. Now, in an isolated renal disease, if I go, it's basically post-infectional glomerular nephritis, which is post-streptococcal infections. Then uh, IG nephropathy, uh, L-pot syndrome, uh, thin glomerular basement membrane, membrane proliferate glomerular nephritis, uh, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, and the multi-system disease, obviously the HSP, uh, 
venous cumin papulas nephritis, SLE, uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome, uh, polyarteritis nodosa, good pasture syndrome, and sickle cell growth nephritis. Now, in these cases, especially in multisystem disease, what we have seen is the hemolytic uremic syndrome and uh, SLE nephritis, SHP nephritis is most common. Uh, normally, sickle cell glomerulopathy we uh, do find, but uh, that is these cases are only found uh, found in the government setups. Okay, now like I told you, we had seen the causes. One is the glomerular hematuria. Now I am going to go with the extra glomerular causes of hematuria. So extra glomerular causes of hematuria basically involves the nephrons and your anatomical, uh, you know, uh, congenital and omitical uh, diseases. So upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract infections. The upper respiratory goes with your tubulointerstitial uh, diseases like pyelonephritis, which is one of the most commonest. Uh, acute tubular necrosis, again, most commonest. Interstitial nephritis, most commonest. Uh, Anatomic is, yes, hydronephrosis, polycystic kidney disease, uh, and tubers, base kind of and trauma. So they are the extra glomerular immaturia. Now, there are certain causes, vascular causes, like I told you. Uh, so we have done, see, we have done uh, the glomerular hematuria, glomerular causes. We have done extra glomerular causes of hematuria. Now I'm going to come with vascular causes, arterial and venous thrombosis, malformation, which can be congenital and acquired malformations, and hemoglobinopathy, which we discussed earlier, which is a sickle cell trait and a disease. Uh, sometimes when we find a lot of calcium oxalate crystals and uric acid crystals, then also we, uh, we can uh, see hematuria. Medications, yes, certain medications like NSAID, they have been going on for a long period of time in basically uh, your autoimmune diseases and anticoagulant therapies. Uh, that is also one of the reasons of vascular reasons of hematuria. Now, this we did. Now, what are the commonest causes which we find in pediatric cases? Now, the commonest causes which we uh, find in OPDs, uh, you know, uh, no, which can be in, uh, you know, the hospital based. Uh, practices or a clinical based practice, which we are finding is basically UTI. The commonest thing a child comes to you and the parent says he has been passing uh, uh, very, uh, 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 you know, uh, high colored urine and he is basically the frequency of micturation is very uh, high and he is this painful micturation is there and obviously that is associated with fever. Now, remember one thing, if you find that, that other causes of fever have been ruled out, but a child is having a very high-grade fever, which is associated with chills, remember that, then uh, at least in my practice, what I have seen is a child who is coming with a lot of chills and rigors with a very high-grade fever, uh, with you know no uh, throat infection, with no cough and cold, and the fever is there for more than two days, with only a decrease or an increased frequency of micturation, then please think about a urinary tract infection as the first diagnosis rather than going on to the uh, higher diagnosis because uh, we should basically go with the diagnosis with the basic ones. Then, uh, meatal stenosis, yes, that may again cause pyelonephritis because if there is stenosis of the meatus opening, then uh, the, uh, you know, there is a, you know, backflow of the urine goes to the urinator and then they, that can also cause to hematuria. Perineal irritation, yes, if the perineal irritation is there, that may cause, you know, spread of infection to the urinary tracts and then cause a UTI. Trauma, any kind of trauma, uh, hypercalciuria, coagulopathies, and tumor. So these are the commonest causes of gross hematuria. Uh, I have listed in a way that you should basically go on the way I have written. So don't go to a coagulopathy first and then uh, think about, oh, it was a urinary tract infection. So preferably, I would suggest to go with the urinary tract infection, then think why the urinary tract infection was there, and then see if it's a newborn baby or if it's a baby who is having perineal irritation or something like that. Then you go ahead, ask for a trauma history. So uh, these things will come in the history taking. So these are the basic diagnoses which you should think as first diagnosis in an OPD practice as well as the IPD practice. Okay, this we did. Uh, so, uh, okay, now let's come to the uh, uh, causes of immaturity in the newborns. Now, uh, see, any kind of uh, asphyxia in the newborn, uh, a respiratory distress in the newborn, uh, uh, when the child lands up into shock, uh, obviously we understand that the blood supply goes, uh, knocks off uh, to the, uh, you know, 
you have the renal veins and all this, and then it leads to renal vein thrombosis, which is one of the causes of hepatic kidney. Renal artery thrombosis is there. Polycystic kidney disease, yes, the, one of the most common uh, causes. Uh, UTI again comes over here. Obstructive uropathy uh, can be there. Trauma, bladder catheterization. If the baby has been catheterized too much, and uh, we find that after uh, persistent catheterization with the baby, which has not been changed for long, and when we take it out, can cause an injury to the urinary tract and lead to, uh, you know, uh, the uh, hematuria. Uh, then, uh, like I told you, uh, HIE, stage 3, stage 2, stage 3, can cause uh, cortical necrosis leading to hematuria. And uh, uh, nephrocalcinosis, which is because of uh, uh, when the child lands up into CHF and we have to give uh, fluzomide, then nephrocalcinosis is one of the causes of hematuria and newborn. So I'm not going into the details of the uh, causes of immature of newborn because we are not uh, dealing that topic right now. Now, how to diagnose uh, a child who comes to you in a clinic with hematuria? So first of all, like I told you, the most important thing is history. Now you have to first see the age. Age is basically two to five years. If the baby is coming with the hematuria, then yes, you can think about a Wilms tumor. 5 to 12 years is basically post epidemical glomerular nephritis because uh, these aged children are more, uh, you know, uh, uh, prone for a post epidemical infection, throat infections, and that can uh, lead to a glomerular nephritis. So uh, the female population is more affected by the male population, uh, one to two years. One of the commonest causes is UTI, uh, female to male SCD nephritis. And race uh, is uh, basically for us whites and you know uh, more uh, kids who are with sickle cell disease. Now uh, next uh, now now comes the color of urine. Now this also comes as a part of uh, your history taking. Now once the patient comes to you, you can just think about the uh, you know diagnosis age related. Uh, like I told you before, diagnosis will always be a UTI, and uh, then you ask the color of the urine. Now uh, what color of the urine is? Uh, mothers come with the uh, history that the child is passing a dark uh, yellow urine, which is a normal consistency, which is because of dehydration. Also, a uh, dark brown or a black urine, which is basically because of bile pigments and other, uh, you know, uh, myth hemoglobinemia and all those things. Polar colored is a global hematuria. So these colors we have to remember, uh, or at least put it in your clinics so that at least you come to know what is. Uh, how you can delineate the diagnosis and uh, help you out to come to a point where you can say, yeah, this is the reason of hematuria in children. And uh, red or pink urine is extra glomerular hematuria. So remember one thing now. Uh, polar colored hematuria is basically a glomerular hematuria. Red or pink colored urine is basically an extra glomerular hematuria, myoglobin urea, porifirins, drugs like uh, chloroquines and uh, rifampicins. Rifampicin does causes this. So you have to ask these in histories. So unless until you take a detailed history, you're not going to come to know the, uh, you know, you, you cannot uh, 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 delineate your diagnosis accordingly. Okay. Now uh, we have gone with the age. We have gone with the color of the urine. Now we go with the uh, characteristics of the urine. Characteristics means whether there are clots passing or whether it's a fresh blood, uh, what is the amount of the urine, how is the frequency of the urine, whether he has been uh, having uh, increased frequency of urine or if he's having, uh, you know, he's passing urine maybe uh, two uh, two times or three times in a day, uh, then uh, the is the urine, you know, a frothy kind of urine. Whenever he's passing urine, there's a froth in the urine. And uh, uh, what else is there? The amount of urine, obviously, if it is reduced, then you basically, uh, you should rule out acute, acute global nephritis or an acute renal failure, as we all know. Right. Uh, if there's an increased frequency of urination, then first thing comes into mind is a urine infection, urine tract infection, which I already told you, with female having a more predominance rather than the males. Now, uh, if you are passing clots in the urine, then it's basically the, you should think about the extra glomerular causes of uh, uh, hematuria. If there's an increased frequency or dysuria or recent enuresis, like I told you, UTI, which I've already discussed, Frothy urine is basically protein urea in cases of, you know, uh, globulin, all kinds of globulin diseases. Uh, timing is important because initial stream from urethra, so urethrinagia, spotting in the underwear is there. And if it is basically terminal with a suprapubic pain, 
and disturbance of intubation is from the bladder. That means what I mean to say is that if the child is passing urine and if he is having a suprapubic pain, complaints of a suprapubic pain and is having a difficulty in passing urine, that is basically mostly from the bladder origin. And if it is basically from the urethra, then there will always be a spotting in the arterials. So, uh, so we have got a history. Now, what can be the extra glomerular symptoms? That means, what are the uh, other symptoms which you have to look into if you have to think about hematuria? Now, uh, is there any uh, infection? Is there any uh, uh, infection is associated with the high grade fever? Is there any uh, you know abdominal pain associated? Is there any abdominal mass which you can feel? Are there any joint pains or are there any rashes all over the body? Uh, then you have to go with uh, uh, things like uh, whether the child is having yellow or uh, yellow or discoloration of the eye that is jaundice. Uh, then you have to see about uh, uh, the facial puffiness or the edema of the legs. So these things you have to look into. Now, I have just put out some points like if the fever is there and uh, uh, there is a uh, Immaturia, then you should think about all kinds of infections, specifically the post streptococcal uh, global nephritis, SAD, and the acute global nephritis, which comes with that. Uh, then you can go ahead with the facial puffiness, uh, edema of legs, weight gain, and uh, uh, hypertension. If the child comes with persistent headaches or he is having, uh, you know, diplopia, uh, complaints of double vision, epistaxis, has a history of seizures. Uh, then you should think about uh, acute global nephritis. Again, abdominal pain, which I mentioned already, UTI, and lat to gran is basically urolithiasis. Abdominal uh, mass can just see hydronephrosis, Wilms tumor. Joint pains is very important to rule out HSP and SED because a patient who is having a persistently low grade fever uh, with a joint pain, uh, with hematuria, and uh, sometimes rashes also. Then you should really first diagnosis which should come into your mind is an HSP or SLE and you have to investigate audibly. That is very important. Uh, uh, yes, if other uh, parameters are all fine, if other uh, investigations are coming, okay. Uh, jaundice, I have already told, obstructive jaundice and the hemolysis, which also includes the sickle cell disease also. Now, like I told, trauma. Trauma is basically history of exercise. Uh, menstruation, any bladder catheterization which has been there or passage of a calculus can cause hematuria's upper respiratory tract infection, which I already told you what to do the back, the post vocal infection and the skin infection, uh, which can uh, again be, uh, you know, a uh, uh, staph infection or strepto infection, uh, GI infections. Now, uh, gross hematuria is basically precipitated by upper respiratory infection in cases of Elport syndrome. Uh, the other sites uh, of uh, bleeding sites should be checked for any history of trauma, like I told you, abdominal surgeries or child abuse and crush injuries and ingestion of drugs. But the major drugs which we really, uh, so which I have really found is, uh, which we get confused with hematuria is basically the rifampicin, uh, because that also causes a red colored urine. Then ibujesic, we have ibuprofen, which you say. Uh, again, uh, long-term use of ibuprofen. Sometimes I have seen people coming up with hematuria. Iron, yes, red colored urine. Uh, Lariuco, which is clearly a malarial uh, drug, which is most commonly used in uh, the government setups. Uh, so we tell them that, see, the baby or the child may have a red colored urine, but if it is persistently going on, then please let us know so that we can go ahead and do investigation. And obviously, contrast agents uh, when we do certain investigations.